Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Daily Volatility Box Report for November 1st, 2019. We are TOSIndicators.com, home of the Volatility Box. For today's trading, we didn't really have any trades that set up. The only time where we really breached uh, any sort of entry was on the crude oil futures, uh, but this was into the afternoon hours, at least East Coast time, not really when you're looking to initiate new entries. And so for the week, we had a total P&L of $2,398.75. And so since we didn't have any trades uh, set up today, in tonight's video, we'll spend some time looking at the copper futures. Uh, one of our members, Peter, if you're listening, thanks for pointing this out. We had released uh, the copper futures uh, last weekend and the weekend before. And let's take a look at least uh, at this week's activity to just study the market uh, live in one of these videos and use a no trade day to see if we can uh, find any sort of patterns and then we'll also layer on that new indicator that we're going to be releasing over the weekend uh, to show you how that could help you filter out some noise, at least on the copper futures, uh, and then also might be useful on the gold futures. For Monday on the calendar, we don't really have anything that calls for us to be a bit more conservative. And so we'll just be looking uh, to see if we have any weekend news, what Sunday activity looks like, and then also just be looking uh, at this calendar to see if this updates with any new news events. Uh, and other than that, just uh, any breaking news uh, that comes up on Forex Factory right down underneath the calendar uh, with that red folder symbol. And using that in our aggressive volatility box first hour test, we'll be looking to trade Monday and uh, decide which volatility box we should be using. So let's first start by looking at the crude oil futures. And that one trade that actually came, or actually a couple trades that ended up uh, giving you entries, uh, came at right around the 10 a.m. Pacific uh, hour, right after then. And at this point, you only have a couple hours left in the market for follow through. Uh, so not really a point on a Friday, um, Friday afternoons where you're looking to initiate a new position um, where you are expecting on some sort of follow through where weekend risk is really not part of your plan. And so that's why this crude trade isn't really one that we're looking at really on Fridays after 8 a.m., maybe 9 a.m. If you're really feeling like pushing it uh, should be that cutoff for new entries. Uh, especially just because you don't want to carry on that weekend risk or at least have to be staring at the markets uh, to close out of Friday. Now, if we go to our copper futures and we'll layer on that new uh, copper volatility box, we'll take a look at only the uh, entries that came up during regular market hours. And so if we just do a quick eyeball test, uh, this is that first time where you would have gotten an entry during regular market hours where you did in fact have the follow through that we would have been looking for. And so that's one good positive trade. If we keep scrolling through, we had a massive puke down lower here where you would have stopped out of a trade and this happened during regular market hours. And this move, I believe, also happened on the indices. But what we notice on the copper futures is that it's exaggerated a little bit more where uh, this just looks like a complete plummet down, almost like a straight down roller coaster. And so this is something we'll keep in mind. We'll also come back and observe this specific day when we layer on uh, Keats new indicator. Now, if we follow through to the next day, something very similar, we see that first entry was uh, that bad entry. And typically using our volatility box rules, this would have then put us on the conservative volatility box, at which point we would not have triggered into that second entry, uh, which is really the one that gave us that follow through. So we'll again layer on Keats new indicator and see if this gives us any sort of better idea. And then if we come into today, uh, we got close to an entry in the morning here. Uh, if you front ran your uh, entries, and once again, you did get that sort of follow through that you're looking for. And then once again, the afternoon hours where you're not looking to initiate new entries. So now let's layer on Keith's new indicator and see how those two specific spots look like. Also, uh, Keith is a member who created this special version of the RSI. Uh, and so that's why we call it the Keith indicator right now. Um, but this is our next tutorial. But let's give you a sneak peek at how you may use it and the value that it might provide to your trading. There's two, there's an upper and a lower. The lower is a little bit more complicated, so we'll ignore it for right now. And in this video, we'll just focus on looking at these chart bubbles, which spell out in sort of simple English when we enter an oversold area and when we exit a super oversold area based off of what we define to be super oversold. And then the same thing with the overbought conditions. And so uh, right here, what we wanted to do is avoid this noise. And we don't really see that we're entering a super oversold area here. Versus this point, uh, we do see that we're entering super oversold in this candle. And this entry then might be that green light. And this sort of pattern has proven to be true uh, on the gold futures, another market where we don't really have entries or a plan for all uh, hours of the market. 
Um, but we look only during that six to seven hour. But this indicator, at least if we start to use it to study these markets more, which is what we'll study in that tutorial as well, uh, may have the potential to broaden the horizon for the, the hours that we're looking at trading some of these markets. If we take this back just to that previous day as well, one more thing we see as well is we don't see that super oversold until this candle right here. And so if we play this through as if it were regular market hours, and if on the copper futures you're waiting for a super oversold symbol uh, sign to come up before you're looking at entries, you've already seen this as free information. And so at this point, using our plan, you would be on the conservative volatility box. So let's see how this action here looks like on the conservative volatility box for the copper future. Now with our conservative volatility box on the copper futures, even that unfortunately didn't capture this sort of plummet down. And so this is where you would have still been stopped at, at least if you follow our rules. Uh, but you can see how at least using these bubbles, you have a little bit more information. And if we bring this on over to the gold chart as well, and actually to be fair, uh, Keith does suggest using a four minute chart and let's try and see if we have an area. All right. So not that uh, again, these are just patterns that we're observing and we're trying to create a specific plan for gold futures. And there's a lot of you that I think like to trade a little bit more often than maybe the volatility box gives you entries for. And here's just some ways that you might do it. Right. So we have the enter over bot over uh, uh, bubbles that come up. We've also just hit that previous hours uh, volatility box exhaustion lines. And this may be a point where if you have a few other tickers that might help you signal a reversal. We also have what we've custom built in, which is our own version of the squeeze. And we'll format this to look a little bit nicer. And then what you'll also notice is uh, we also have trend lines that we've built in uh, for the RSI. Um, and it looks a little bit hideous on the gold chart, but we'll notice how the bubbles on a few other charts give you ideas of where you might actually have entry. In this upcoming tutorial video, we'll talk about how we use this on the gold futures as well, or how rather Keith has discovered a way to uh, use this on the gold futures. And we'll try and see if we may be able to create a trading plan around it. But at the very least, I think this is a cool RSI, a dynamic RSI that you could use not only to day trade, but also swing trade and really just a, a smarter RSI in lieu of the traditional RSI that I think most folks are used to seeing. Uh, hopefully we'll be releasing that tutorial this weekend. So uh, keep a look out for that. Uh, we hope you have a wonderful weekend and we look forward to trading with you next week. All right. Take care, everyone.